Hello everyone and welcome back in to our next Harry Potter casting react video. By now on YouTube you guys know what we're doing. We were reacting to Brian Seeker and his recasting Harry Potter for today's series. We are on the Order of the Phoenix. Let me know what you think he's what what kind of job you think he's done so far in the casting. Maybe let me know some of the some of the suggestions for people you would cast in the comments below. But otherwise, let's get right into it. Recasting Harry Potter for today, Order of the Phoenix. Also, whoever he casts as Dolores, you got to be able to hate Umbridge. You got to be able to hate Umbridge. It's a must. We are now more than halfway through the Harry Potter series. What do you guys think on Twitch? Is Umbridge more Order evil than Phoenix. Voldemort? Yes or no? Goblet of Fire. The it's a debate question. Videos, the large majority of you guys pretty much didn't line up with my vision. There was a large, passionate outcry for Benedict Cumberbatch as Voldemort. The main reason... I mean, yeah? I can see Benedict Cumberbatch as Voldemort. But like, also, Daniel Day-Lewis? Y'all are turning down Daniel Day-Lewis for Benedict Cumberbatch as Voldemort? Weird. Not a chance. It's got to be Daniel Day-Lewis over... I think Benedict Cumberbatch would nail it. But, man, Daniel Day-Lewis is top-notch. I really didn't cast Cumberbatch was age and although I'm not going back on my choice of Daniel Day-Lewis since everyone was so passionate about Cumberbatch I thought I'd do something a little bit extra for you fans out there and give you a taste of what Cumberbatch might look like as Voldemort Fair so enough. Here oh, we had a photoshop as Lord Voldemort. He's got the look for it So I hope he's that definitely got the look for it disappointment from the last episode and I'll be honest He does look great in the role which brings me to my next point. Since we're coming up to the end of the series soon, would you like to see a bonus episode on my secondary choices for the cast? Just in case that main actor Ooh, that I cast refused the role. That'd be Let interesting. Me I mean, I'll say yes. I'll make sure to do that. I'll react to as many of these videos okay, as possible. The Phoenix, which would be by far the longest season in this series. Again, some really iconic roles to cast. I mean, Umbridge, the most notable. Yeah. And I'm also going to tackle some roles that I didn't get to in the past, like Cornelius Fudge. But there are some characters I'm not going to cast because I don't think they need to be cast by main notable stars, like Neville's parents. I Fair think enough. casting yeah. an A-list actor in those roles would take you out of the dramatic nature <laughs> of it. <laughs> but he cast A-list actors as Harry's parents who objectively don't do a lot other than appear in photos. Those scenes. So they'll remain Even in the books, they don't as do well a lot. As Luna Lovegood, who again, I would love to see a new face for that character, much like our main trio. And Creature, who should have a voice of his own, and not just some famous person's voice. But without further ado, let's recast Harry Potter in the order. I am ready. I am ready for this. First up, as always, is the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. Dolores. Oh, he's going. He's going for the, the first pick right away. Voldemort in pure evil. I won't lie, there's no better choice than Imelda Staunton, who played the character in the films. She is perfection. I don't know how I'm going to be able to watch the next season of The Crown. Or the season, not the next season, but season five of The Crown. When she's the queen. How am I going to do that? She's just Dolores Umbridge. Like, I hate her. How am I going to watch The Crown? The role. However, I do have the task of recasting and just picking Imelda again. It's just really boring. So let's find someone who can take Umbridge in a slightly different direction. I don't think he can improve on the first interpretation, but let me give it my best try. First off, unwavering command of the screen is required for this role. Umbridge yep. needs to be certain of her I agree. Choices, uh, you have to be with confident as Umbridge. Smoke. Umbridge is described as looking like a toad. And in the books, she's really quite short and stocky. It's very important that we see that little, unassuming lady wearing pink who is pure evil. Her physicality really does matter in this case. <laughs> I really Snape. want someone short. I love that. But she cast, she hasn't cast Fred and George yet. Someone who can really embody the role completely. Now I want her to cast I Fred and George. Character. Umbridge is actually in her 30s roughly in her time at Hogwarts. Yep. Even though it's not explicitly said in the books, even JK herself said she pictured someone younger when it came to Umbridge. When I first read the books, I did it as well, but not that much, not that much younger. I think as a kid, I think as a kid, you assume evil people are really, really old. You don't read someone who's evil and go, oh, they're in their, they're in their 30s, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, and maybe when I first read it, I read it as a kid. And from that perspective, I pictured someone maybe around this age, right? But now as an adult, going back and revisiting the books over and over again, I definitely picture someone a little younger. So I've chosen to go younger for Umbridge. Technically because she's supposed to be younger. 
but also because I want to see a different light of this character. I want to see someone who's climbed the ranks very young and someone who's trying to prove themselves and is willing to do no matter what to get there. All right. With that in mind for the character and that different feel, I think Elizabeth Moss would be amazing. Oh, yeah, Handmaid's Tale. Mammoth amazing. Before, and she's so actually good. one of the best actresses of our generation. So good, yeah. She's unbelievable in Handmaid's Tale and has, let's call it, an interesting look. I think Very she good. feels that toad-like look we're going for. And she's only 5'3", which is great for the character. But most importantly, I feel comfortable with the role in her hands. Sometimes she gets the short side of the stick, playing stereotypical female roles. But she's really got- I love this pick. Eyes. I really love I this decided. pick. I am going to tear this love out of my heart. I'm just going to rip it out by the roots. How are you going to do that? I'll get married. I think that's overdoing it. <laughs> She's Is very it good. Loving without hope. Waiting for years for something that will never come. She has enough gravitas and poise to play that villain in pink. So Elizabeth Moss yep. as Dolores Umbridge. I agree. I don't, know. I don't know if that Photoshop is doing it perfectly, but 100% agree. Great pick. Next up, we'll tackle the first Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge. His iconic bowler hat is the main thing that I always think of when it comes to Fudge. But he's described as little and kind of... I almost picture like Hugh Jackman from what's the greatest showman like that level of just like, ha, ah, hello, I'm crazy type of, yeah. Not that I think Hugh Jackman should play corny fudge, but like that level of like pizzazz. Porky, although he's good natured and sometimes even kind, ultimately he fails in office. He refuses to listen to Dumbledore and really hear reason. It's also noteworthy that his judgment really isn't the best. He puts faith in Umbridge of all people. His, 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 his judgment isn't really the best? That's the worst you're going to say for old Corny Fudge? His judgment is objectively awful. It's, it's not even not really the best. It's, it's definitely the worst. Like, there's a big scale in between that he needs to... He has failed upwards, obviously. Oh, what have I done? This is really boring. So let's find someone who can... Oh, I've just pressed a button. Yeah, we got Elizabeth Moss. Cool. Here we go. He fails in office. He refuses to listen to Dumbledore and really hear reason. It's also noteworthy that his judgment really isn't the best. He puts faith in umbrage of all people. I what feel a, like he's what a description. dumb or just very scared. Or maybe a little bit of both. Both. I feel it's Hugh both. Bonville would yep. do very well with yeah, yeah. this character. Yep, 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 he yep, yep. He has yep. that very political vibe to him. And he yep. can definitely lean into Absolutely. his side a little bit with this role. My name is... Beg your pardon? Very good pick. Right. So far, two for two. Ten out of ten picks, oh, cool. I think. Hmm? You try it. Mr. Bradley, that is extremely rude. <laughs> but the main reason is because I think he has the acting ability to help portray someone with weight upon their shoulders yep. and everyone looking to Also, him. Corny Fudge is definitely one of the people who gets a significantly higher amount of screen time as you transition this from movies to a TV show adaptation, which is what this casting is doing. You need someone who's very, very flexible in this role because you definitely get some of those weightier meatier moments in the books with his emotion and his judgment and those types of things and he can really portray him crumbling under the pressure of that so hugh bonville is yep. cornelius fudge i love it 10 out of 10 next pick. up we have the minister of magic to be the one after the series who wears the title kingsley shacklebolt he's calm reassuring it's gonna be hard to recast amazing. kingsley he's very good in the movies side story with kingsley and the prime minister that really can be translated to screen that we originally didn't see maybe it's because i I love the kingsley who is with the the muggle prime minister in his office just doing work with magic and being the most effective person i always love that scene in the books oh he ends up as minister or because he's protecting the prime minister but i always have the illusion of him having the best qualities of a good politician but you can't deny Dumbledore's got style. 
I didn't see Kingsley as someone who had the best qualities of a politician. I saw Kingsley in the books at least as someone who who was just a very skilled auror. Someone who was relied upon, almost like being the head of the Secret Service in a way. And someone who it kind of naturally makes sense after everything goes to shit and Voldemort's dead. Right? You, you just pick someone that's so reliable and so good at magic and has this like gravitas to him. Um, I always pictured, I pictured Kingsley kind of like how he was in the movies, like similar. I've always seen Kingsley as a calm, well thought out person who thinks before he acts. And although he's large in stature, he'd rather exchange words than fists. Yep. That's why I think Chia would tell Ajiafor would fit the role really well. The man's voice Do is I know him from like anything? Poetry. He commands the English language, and he really makes you hang on every word he says, which is very true to the character. Yes, we did it. Oh, yes, I do. By also violating the natural law. Yep, yeah, I, I like this pick. It's over. Three for three. You still think there will be no consequences, Strange? Yep, I can see him being Kingsley. No price to pay. We broke our rules just like her. The bill comes due. Always. Yeah, I can hear it in the voice. I can hear the gravitas in the voice. And I, I don't think of Kingsley as even like a slow speaker, but I he definitely commands a presence, and I, I, I can see this. He's someone who could really bring more attention to the role, and he'd help you understand why he's the man to follow when Voldemort is dead and gone. So Chi would tell Ejiofor as Kingsley Shacklebolt. Yep. Good pick. And the Order of the Phoenix were introduced to Nymphadora Tonks. Although I enjoyed the previous... Jody Comer! <laughs> I'm going to say Jody Comer for everything until Jody Comer gets a pick. The connection between her and Lupin felt a little unearned. I'd like to spend more time... Oh, okay. If we're talking about unearned things in the, mov in the, in the movies, this is like... This is sacrilege what they did to the Tonks and Lupin relationship in the movies it is such a beautiful intense and heartbreaking and amazing like books long it's not even books long it actually happens in quite a short period of time but you really go through all the ups and downs and, and lupin dealing with who he is and his condition and tonks just she's just not feeling herself and harry can tell but they don't know what's causing it and like you it's a really, it's a B plot in the books that really kind of blossoms at the end, but it's so well written. It just breaks my heart in the movies that they just did away with it all. And I get that you have to, but it, it did feel super unearned. I'm on their relationship and cast an actor who I think would work well with Tom Hiddleston, who I cast as Lupin. Tonks is a fun loving, silly woman who was actually very young. Jodie Comer. Lupin actually rejected her feelings because he felt he was too old and wore down. Tonks is described as having a heart shaped face and twinkling eyes. She usually has short spikes. Come on, I'm ready. I got in this. Oh, no, no. Again, some really iconic roles. What have I done? I've clicked the button again. Oh, dear. How do. Why do these buttons go back farther every time? I'm just trying to click my party horn. Oh, where are we? Here we go. I have the party horn ready for Jodie Comer. Silly woman. Are you guys ready? It's going to be Jodie Comer this time. Rejected her feelings. She also drinks beer. I love beer. Tonks and I, we'd get along. Because he felt he was too old and wore down. Tonks is described as having a heart-shaped face and twinkling eyes. Jodie Comer. Shirts by Kara. That's pink. But she changes her appearance throughout the series and really at Come will. On. She likes to have fun and play around with her appearance a lot. She needs to have that fun-loving nature, though. But can also get serious. In my mind, she's quirky, but pretty, and a little cheeky in that manner. I think Natalie Dormer would be great. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We'll give it to Natalie Dormer. She's That's a better a pick than Jodie Comer. <laughs> and she can really portray that silly and playful side. Absolutely. Of she's a little bit on okay. the Okay, on the record, I'm just saying Jodie Comer because I'm jaded, and I think Jodie Comer... This guy is shelling out all his money on casting budget, and I'm jaded that he hasn't picked Jodie Comer yet, who is an English actress and... I don't know if you've watched Killing Eve. Absolutely unbelievable. But Natalie Dormer is a way better pick for Tonks. Absolutely fantastic pick. I do, but I don't think she looks it at all. I mean, she managed to portray loving Joffrey convincingly. So I'm sure she'll have no trouble next to Tom Hiddleston. Whenever you look at this night, I want you to remember your father. He wasn't a knight. He was just a soldier. And what do knights swear to do? 
protect the weak and uphold the good. Your father did that. Be proud of him. His father died for Joffrey Baratheon. His father is dead. For Joffrey Baratheon. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that just terrible? So Natalie Dormer as Nymphadora Tonks. Hmm. You can see it. That's such a good pick. That's a double party horn pick. This is officially, as long as it doesn't get messed up in the next minute and a half, officially my favorite casting so far. As for Voldemort's most faithful follower, Bellatrix Lestrange, one of the most fun. Oh, here we go, because Helena series. Bottom Carter was so good. Who can portray sadistic and violent, but quite intelligent. Bellatrix actually takes a leadership role without Voldemort present. So it's especially another character. If you're going from movies to a television show, would have a lot more screen time, especially later on. So you, you like Helena Bottom Carter is great, but you need you need someone that can take the screen time. It's important that we can have someone who really can portray that as well. Sometimes the easiest choice is the best choice. Much like Helena Bonham Carter, who played similar roles before. Eva yep. Green is in that same boat. Now it's yep, so hard absolutely. to Green in the role of Bellatrix. Man! Honestly, looking at her, she just fits. Yeah, absolutely. Her She's just see. perfect. She's gothic, has that presence, and can play unhinged. Uh, the most important yeah. thing in life is desire. You can achieve anything you want. The world is yours for the taking. Nothing is impossible for you, my girl. That, that her voice has this crackly kind of I don't know. Almost like I don't it's it's a beautiful voice but like a paper shredder aspect to it and it it just fits so well. Bells. All you need is to desire it. No, I don't think she would Did you hear that on the desire? You, Listen to the R. All you need is to desire it. That that there it is. It's like that crackling. Oh, great pick. No, I don't think she would go as big as Helena. But she would play the loyal she might. follower extremely well. I think she would be more subtle in her insane ways, more psychological than outwardly crazy, but it would still be wonderful. And my God, does she ever look the part, probably more than any other actor I've cast. Yeah. So Eva Green as Bellatrix. 100%. I love it. I love it. So there is our cast for Order of the Phoenix. Also, a lot of you keep on saying to do deep fakes for this. And a channel here on YouTube called As Art actually reached out that they're kind of doing this along with my casting. They did one as Adam Driver as Snape. And although they have a slightly different choice as Umbridge, their deep fake turned out amazing. So head over to their channel, give them a subscribe, and let them know I sent you. So <laughs> they're doing like real life photoshops over top of the, I love that. Who would you cast? Because I always love reading your cast in the comments below. As always, thank you to my patrons, Adam Gray, Jeremy J. All right, he's at the patrons. This was a video brought to you by Brian Seeker. Thank you, Brian Seeker for the video i love this what a fantastic job what a fantastic video very well done very well produced i i am in awe of the effort he puts in to recasting harry potter this was my favorite recasting so far by a long shot this was the 10 out of 10 just banger after banger after banger nailed it every time eva green is bellatrix lestrange just oh okay it was already a 10 out of 10, and then that just put it, mm, it's like oh, it's just the cherry on top. Brilliant. Amazing. So I love this. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I would really like to hear how you thought he did recasting Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. We are going to move on now to Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, definitely click that like button, especially if you like the video. That's what the button's for. Hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss any more videos like this. And other than your comments in the description below, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.